it's tragic when you have to take amazing production design and, and cut it down to nothing because the, this was one of the most extravagantly designed scenes in the film where um, they had taken this, um, I wasn't there for shooting, I forgot if it was a warehouse or something downtown and converted it into this restaurant, New York restaurant. And we had, um, as you can see when you watch the scene, these, these beautiful crane shots of showing all the tables and all the extravagant meals. And as we, as we visited um, Edie and Keaton, or introduced uh, Edie and Keaton into the scene, and it gave the background of Keaton trying to get his life together and her helping him uh, become a successful businessman. And um, for that reason, the scene was great because it really set up those, the, the dynamic of the two characters, and it really uh, made you understand sooner um, rather than discovering it, that Keaton really was this guy who was serious about getting his life together. Um, the problem was that its placement in the film interrupted the arrest sequence in the beginning of the film, because as you know, Keaton is rounded up in the end of that restaurant scene. So I had all of these arrests happen in this very fast-paced style, you know, Fenster's arrested and Hockney's arrested, and all of a sudden we, put on a, we, we came to a screeching halt, and we're in this, rest at this restaurant to introduce Keaton. And unfortunately, it just, it just, it just interrupted the rhythm and the, and the, the dynamo of the, um, of the scene. So unfortunately, it had to cut out the entire front half of the sequence, and we just came in midstream. But you still get the idea that he's giving a business pitch to some people, and, and you get in the course of the film that he's trying to turn his life around. So it was, a, it was a good cut, but those things are, are uh, you have to step back and see the bigger picture and, and realize that, that it's, uh, it was the right thing to do. Let me look at you. Now remember, this is another kind of business. They don't earn your respect. You owe it to them. And don't stare them down. But don't look away either. It's confidence. And they're fools not to trust you. That's the attitude. Jeez. I'm having a stroke. I love you. Live with it. Dinner in? C'est pas grave, il dit bonjour. Antoine Renault, il dit Finerand. Enchanté. Enchanté. Monsieur Kitt, Antoine Renault. Dominique Fontier, enchanté. Please sit down. Please. It's so nice to finally meet you, Mr. Kitt. Okay. Sure. Oui, commencez, ne nous attendez pas. Bon appétit. Uh, Idi brought us your proposal. And I will be honest, we are very impressed. But I must admit, still confused. Mm. Well, it's quite simple. This almost tops the other scene for being cheesy. We, uh, we wanted uh, the visual of Arturo Marquez's body being discovered because if, if things are just talked about, the audience might be more confused, and so it's better to always have you know visual aids, of course. And um, so this uh, really expensive dummy of Arturo Marquez's body was constructed, and I think cost five thousand dollars, which is a huge amount of money for this movie. And um, so the scene was shot where um, uh, a kid discovers the body floating floating under a bridge as he's fishing. And um, the kid was the, uh, the son of uh, one of the producers of the film, Michael McDonnell. And, uh, but the scene was just, it just didn't feel like it was part of this movie. And, um, and then when the body bubbled up, for no particular reason, I mean, the kid's looking over fishing, and all of a sudden this body just bubbles up. And it, it, was, it was a little too cheesy looking, so we cut the scene. And we got away with um, Arturo Marquez's body being discovered, just being talked about, as opposed to seeing it. But I did use that shot of it bubbling up in... Uh, different sequences in the movie, in the flashback sequence. So we got to use it.
there was a tremendous amount of second unit sh uh, footage shot in the boat, which was not really scripted. This was the one part where I talk about it on the on the commentary track that this area of the movie was was a little mini story that I told in the editing room based upon a ton of um, uh, footage of just actors lurking about, walk, opening doors, closing doors, walking across camera here and then making it seem like we're in many different locations. And one of the scenes that the second unit director um, had shot was this kitchen altercation with uh, with Stephen Baldwin, uh, McManus, and uh, and this. Hungarian, and uh, it sort of slowed things down, and it was very dark. You really couldn't see what was going on, and um, it just, it definitely is, is feels very dead. But um, hell, I, it was on the tape, so I put it on there. here planting the bomb is this really this small snippet that um, uh, that rem that was in this older cut that we'd found which got excised from the movie because uh, it was just it just confused things that, that Keaton the original storyline was that Keaton planted a bomb in the engine room and that's why the ship exploded and that's why in the beginning of the film he asked Kaiser Soze what time is it because he knows that the bomb is about to explode but um, we left that line in, and no one ever asked why he asked that question, but it's because he'd just planted this bomb. And um, this, this little moment on the DVD here is, um, is, where, he, uh, I had, is where he kneeled down and, and set the bomb and uh, started that, that storyline going, but instead it was cut out. There are a few places in the movie where we did this, and th this is uh, kind of a funny story behind this, uh, where, where it, uh, after the interrogation, um, Kuyan is wrapping things up with Verbal, and we've realized now that, that Keaton was Kaiser Soze, we think, and uh, Verbal um, goes on pathetically, and, 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 and the script just went on a little bit too long, and it was at the point where you felt like, okay, it's time for him to get up now and leave the office. It just, it was, you know, you feel, you feel the extra beat that's just taking too much, too much time. And um, Brian would always, you know, come in and out of the editing once in a while and visit me. And uh, and uh, one day, <laughs> I was I gathered all this film up in my in my in my hands, and it was this big ball of film and and, and mag track. And he goes, "What's that?" And I go, "It's bullshit." And I threw it on the ground. <laughs> and it was actually extra spacey dialogue. And um, but uh, some of that was in is in this uh, cut. So this, this is the part that was cut out. Turn state's evidence. You might never see trial. If someone wants to get you, they're going to get you out there. Maybe so. But I'm not a rat, Agent Kuvion. You tricked me, that's all. I won't keep my mouth shut because I'm scared. I'll keep it shut because I let Keaton down by getting caught. I need Ephedrine, too. And if they kill me, it'll be because they hear I dropped dime. And they'll probably hear it from you. Fucking cops. 